All right. There we go. Hi, this is Joe Swartz from AmHydro, and welcome to our March 19th webinar. Today we're going to talk to you about greenhouse and growing system construction. Uh, I've been a grower for 36 years and I've built a number of greenhouses for myself and for other growers and working with AM Hydro, I've been able to travel all over the world and work with growers of different sizes and different configurations on different greenhouse and grow room structures. We always talk about these types of systems or that type of systems and the productivity or um, the operation. But the actual construction process is something that we sometimes don't always talk about. Having done this process many, many times, this is sometimes a difficult and time-consuming process, and there's a lot of moving parts, if you will, for it. And so what I'm hoping is some of the pitfalls that we've seen and encountered, um, we can help kind of impart to you some of the process, so to help you avoid uh, some of these mistakes, save yourself a lot of headaches, some time, and a little bit of money. A lot of times I have someone call me that said, hey, I've got a greenhouse that just arrived on my site, now what? Hopefully we can get to you before that stage in the process. And if you are at that point right now, um, you'll be able to jump into this process as we go. But I'd like to back up a little bit and kind of start from the beginning. So if you haven't already designed and purchased a greenhouse or growing system, let's step back. Let's take a look a little bit at the design and some of the things that we need to kind of put in place so we can have a pretty smooth construction process. So, so basically, let's start at the beginning. So if we, if we begin with our design, and this is really where it's important to work with industry professionals. Um, companies such as ourselves can help you with your growing system design, determining what type of system, what size and configuration. We also work with most leading manufacturers of greenhouse structures here in North America. So we can either work with them in conjunction with your project or we can hand them over to you and you can work with them to determine the proper structure, size, configuration, what type of environmental controls and, and all of those things. There's a lot of, of, of details that go into designing and planning out an operation like this. So if you talk to people who are professionals who have done it before, it's really gonna make the process a whole lot easier. Once we decide uh, what type of greenhouse, what type of size and configuration we go with, now's the time to really develop your plan. So what this really kind of involves is, is a very, very basic design. And this can be as simple as you sitting down with a piece of paper and a pencil. You don't need to have elaborate CAD drawings necessarily. You don't need to have um, a very, very uh, fancy or elaborate design. What you really need to do is have a plan in front of you so you understand everything from the beginning and how this all will go together. And the first thing to start with is, of course, if, is your site. Uh, if you have a site, that's great. It needs to be well-drained and level. It needs to be free of obstructions such as trees or buildings, anything that's gonna impact your sunlight exposure. And it needs to either have utilities uh, already accessible to the site, and this is water, or gas perhaps, electricity, or you need to be able to bring them onto your site. So it's important when you're working with your designers to understand how much water you're gonna need for a system like this, how much electricity, and that can be worked in the plan. So, because you're gonna be working with utility companies or if you hire a general contractor, you're gonna be working with them and they're gonna have questions. How much water do you need? What type of gas? How much gas pressure? Things like that. So it's, it's going to be important at this stage to understand that first and to go with that in terms of your design. So once you do that, that's when you kind of sit down and you can test your art skills a little bit and you can draw out your system. So basically what you want to do is you want to understand this is what our greenhouse is going to look like. We may need uh, other infrastructure or ancillary buildings. For any commercial size operation, you're most likely going to need things like a walk-in cooler, a place to harvest and process your plants, maybe a loading dock. Uh, if you're going to have employees, a place for employees to use a bathroom, uh, break rooms, maybe an office. There's a lot of other pieces that go into the support system of a growing operation like this. So once you begin to draw these out, this is the time to then go and approach your local government. Um, 
permitting and zoning are very, very important issues. And especially if this farm is in a suburban area or an urban area, your impact on the community is going to reflect back on you. So you may be under a lot of scrutiny in terms of proper siting, um, making sure all permits, um, uh, all preparation are done. Really, your I's need to be dotted and T's need to be crossed. So um, there's an old adage that says, uh, it's better to ask forgiveness rather than permission. This does not work in this type of process. You need to start, approach local government officials, show them your plans, explain to them what you're doing, ask them for guidance. They're there to help you. And in general, what we've seen is local officials have been very, very supportive of agricultural projects, but they need to know ahead of time and they can help guide you. So that really, one of the, one of the biggest challenges we see, especially in urban agricultural projects, is uh, a design that does not align with uh, either zoning requirements um, or construction that starts before permits are pulled. And that's really something you want to avoid. So work with your local officials, design your plan, um, make sure all of your regulatory issues are covered. That's gonna save you a ton of time and a lot of headaches later on. One of the most important things as well is to make sure you understand the neighborhood that you're in. If this is on a uh, rural project site and you don't have neighbors uh, close to the greenhouse, um, that's, that's, that's great and that's not a problem. However, if you are building in a neighborhood or somewhere where your operations may impact other people, making sure that you understand um, any concerns of the neighborhood, approaching the neighborhood is very important. We've had growers that have gone into neighborhood association meetings and explained what they want to do. And in general, I've gotten a lot of support. If you're looking to do something like install a wood chip boiler or run lights late into the night or early in the morning, it's very important to understand what impacts that may have and what objections your neighbors might have. Very important from the very beginning to, to work with your local government and then also to understand what potential neighborhood impacts there could be. Really then and only then is it time to put your, your design together and make your purchase. Presumably we order um, the correct growing system, you order the greenhouse. Now it's really crunch time. Now it's time to make sure your site is prepped properly, everything is level, the ground is clear, you have all of your utilities installed, and also it's important to have make sure that your access road is, is ready and prepared. You're gonna have heavy equipment coming onto your property. Making sure that your access road is wide enough, is sturdy enough, um, is great. We, every year we have uh, growers that will call us uh, trucks are getting stuck in the mud. They can't get a crane into a certain site. So understanding that your site needs to be ready before everything arrives um, is extremely important. So lastly, you're in the final stages before your equipment arrives on site. This is really an exciting time. However, it's also important to plan ahead. What we always recommend doing is once you have your land ready to go and your equipment is on the way, Make sure you set up a staging area. We have growers that will uh, either get a metal shipping container or set up a small work shed. We've all seen construction sites that have a construction trailer on it where construction managers work, where they may have instructions and plans set up or tools can be held securely. That's a really great thing to have um, even on a small construction site. Having an area where you can secure tools on site is a valuable thing. You may need to have portable restrooms if you're working uh, yourself or with a, a contractor. Those are important things that are often overlooked. Once the um, equipment or begins arriving on site, staging it correctly. So if your site is ready to go, it makes the most sense, of course, to have the greenhouse structural members, the first pieces of uh, uh, structure that are going up installed closest to the site. It doesn't make sense to have your growing system placed where the greenhouse is gonna go and maybe greenhouse structure put somewhere else and you're moving, you don't wanna move heavy steel components more than one time. So having your, all of your components delivered on site and staged in the proper areas is really, really important. When you place an order for either a growing system or a greenhouse, you'll be able to obtain from your provider detailed drawings and plans. It is important, critically important, to familiarize yourself with these. I would say probably 90% of the calls that I get regarding a question about installing a growing system or setting up a greenhouse can be avoided by reading the instructions and understanding them thoroughly. 
Most greenhouse companies will provide detailed instructions that will walk you through the entire process. It's great to understand this before the greenhouse even arrives on site. Now, a lot of our growers do, especially with small systems, will do the installation themselves. And if you're handy or have some tools, it's actually a pretty straightforward process. However, for a larger system, or if you don't have the mechanical skills required, most people will work with a general contractor. We do work with large scale commercial systems that will have the benefit of a contractor that's specifically a greenhouse contractor, but in general, they only work with larger operations and they can be a little bit costly. So if, if you have a commercial operation, in most cases, you're gonna probably work with a, a local general contractor. They understand they have the equipment, they understand construction techniques, they may not be familiar with greenhouses specifically. So I always like to sit down with a general contractor ahead of time with the greenhouse plans, walk them through the process, explain all the components that go into the greenhouse and how they're installed. Again, you can get this information if you don't already have it, it's easily obtainable. Um, making sure your contractor understands what needs to be done, if there's anything that needs to be fabricated on site, all of these uh, processes are, are fairly simple, but uh, if the contractor is not familiar with them, uh, it's gonna add time and extra cost to your project. So making sure your contractor understands the process, and then once the systems are on site, laying everything out. It's important to take an inventory of all your greenhouse components and growing system components. You'll get a detailed list uh, of all the parts. It's important to lay them out to make sure you have everything because if you're in the process of, of building the greenhouse and you realize you didn't get a certain part it's much better to know before you start the process that the part is not there and you get it replaced rather than having a whole crew held up because uh, a vent motor didn't arrive on time so it's important before you start the process to make sure you have everything that you're going to need and this is not only the parts proper tools and any other equipment for most greenhouses like this, most contractors will use a scissor lift. Um, uh, sometimes a small crane is used. So making sure you have everything ready to go is gonna make the process a whole lot smoother. If you do all that, most bumps in the road involve a piece of equipment maybe getting bent or broken. That's usually easily fixed. And so if, you're, if you have all the parts and tools ready to go, the construction process in general goes pretty smoothly. So lastly, as your construction process progress is progressing, you do have contractors, you have people on your site, you have heavy pieces of, a, of steel. I can't stress enough how important safety is on a project set like this. Understanding uh, all the regulatory requirements, such as OSHA requirements for workers' safety, um, Usually a general contractor has all that covered, but it's very important because it's your site, that your site, site stays secured and safe. So the whole process will go a whole lot smoother if everything stays very orderly and organized. As we near the end of the construction process, we're starting to get geared up, and I can't tell you how often growers will actually wanna get started planting before everything is absolutely complete. And I, I need to tell you, it's critically important that all systems, the greenhouse structure itself, the environmental control systems within the greenhouse, all need to be fully operational and tested before you're ready to, uh, to run your growing system. So once your greenhouse is operational, cooling systems, heating systems, vents, fans, lighting are all fully operational. Your growing system is fully installed. The plumbing is done. You fill it with water. You operate the system, test for leaks, make sure the dosing systems go. It's important that the entire system is running before you ever plant a single seed. Assuming the system is up and running, everything is going smoothly, now we can start the process of growing. And so you're up and running. You're, you're clearly gonna hit some bumps in the road. Construction is always sometimes a little messy, sometimes there are some challenges. Hopefully, if you have done your homework, you've done the design properly, and you set up a clean and organized work site, it's gonna make the process so much easier. So we're here to help we're here to move you through the process, um, but a little planning will go a long way. So I hope that's helped you. You know, these are all based on mistakes and problems that we've seen. And by implementing these few things that I've shown you today, um, we, we, we can hopefully make your process a whole lot easier. We've got a deal of the month that Maya wants me to tell you about. So we have um, coming up our next hydroponic grower seminar 
here in Humboldt County, and that's coming up in June. It's called the Introduction to Hydroponic Crop Production, and it's being held right here in Eureka, California, and it's on June 25th and 26th. So you can visit our website, you can check it out. Um, we have a special deal. You can get two people from your growing operation that can come and attend the two-day seminar and have a hotel room for the night for two nights, and that's only $695. And uh, if you use the code Summer Seminar, you go to our online uh, store and you can purchase that, or you can email Maya at amhydro.com and Maya can help set you up. And speaking of Maya, coming up in April, Maya's gonna do a webinar on social media on your farm. And that is coming up April 16th at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So please feel free to go to amhydro.com Check out our website, check out the seminar schedule, upcoming events, uh, or feel free to email Maya, maya at amhydro.com, and she'll be happy to help you out. So anyway, thanks very much for joining us today. I hope you got some uh, important information that will help you out, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.